G'day, welcome back to the channel. So today we have a very exciting tutorial. We're gonna to be talking about the curves that you may or may not know about in DaVinci Resolve. How's everyone going? I'm doing really good. I've had a really good day today, actually. I've achieved a lot of things. Staring at this orange apparently is one of them. Anyway, if you like things about DaVinci Resolve, learning some tricks and some tips and some color grading, of course, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. You can download high res footage from my website, links below, and you can actually get this pretty crappy looking clip, <laughs> to be honest, from my website, but it will be good to download so you can follow along as we go through each curves in DaVinci Resolve. So I've made one node here, which is just a basic grade. So I've really oversaturated it and pushed a lot of contrast into it. And all in all, just balanced the image and made it look pretty boring. It is what it is. We're not here to make a Fancy color grading video, we're here to do some curves. So then I've made a new node using Alt S, a serial node. In this node, we're gonna go through the curves and I'm gonna explain to you how each one works and why you should use them. We already know what this one does. So we're not gonna do this one. We're gonna concentrate on, I guess you would call them the secondary curves. So our first one, hue versus hue, color versus color. You change the color that you select. Now. I said that in the most complicated way, so how about I just show you to make it a lot easier. But as you can see, our man here has a very faded Smoke Witch t-shirt, which happens to be red. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have your picker available. So come down to this little arrow here and go down to qualifier. Now that's gonna help you select these areas. So let's concentrate on the shirt, because that's a nice bright color. So all you're gonna do is make a point. And then as you see down here, it shows up where that color is. So here's all our colors. And here obviously is that red. So if you bring it up, that will start to change that color and form into a color that's closest to us, so like purple. Now, I would recommend any changes you make, always make it wide. That'll really fill in that color. And what I mean by that is it makes it look more solid. Now, hue versus hue, you do have to be a little bit careful. The more you push, the more broken it will look. So then we go down and it sort of just goes along. At the moment, the closest color is purple. So further we go, now it becomes blue, which is here. And then we've got more and it's more that tearly blue, which is here. So it sort of goes along a range. So if we go down, now we're in the green areas. So basically it means it goes the other way. So if we come up orange, so we're here. So it sort of, it reverses from that point. So if you go down, it's going to the right. And if you go up, it's going to the left, which is basically the middle here. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I feel like it doesn't make sense, but all you need to know is hue versus hue is color versus color. It changes the selected color that you've picked. So we could do it with the orange, for example. And as you can see, it's changing that orange color. Now, because orange is also very prominent in this scene, what you'd want to do is create a power window around that orange, like this, and then you'd go back to your curves, select that orange, and then make your selection. So now we're not hitting the wall, or probably shirt, or maybe even skin tones. Now, of course, if you're gonna make that selection, you'd wanna track it, because as you can see, he does move that orange. Now, I'm not gonna go through how to do that today, because I'm not talking about that, but there is a video on my YouTube channel which goes through how to track, so I'd highly recommend watching that, and then you'll know all the basics of tracking and that will help you a lot. So go and watch that after this video, of course. All right, so on our next one, oh, and we'll take the stupid power window off. Okay, next one, hue versus saturation, color versus saturation. Again, all our colors are down here, very simple. So let's crank up the yellow in this image. So again, click on the area that you wanna saturate and going down, desaturate, and then going up, add saturation. So we're bringing out a little bit more. Again, the wider the selection, the better it generally is. Because if you just go, let's say here, as you can see, it's not really hitting those other areas. But if we were to widen that out a little bit, then as you can see, we have a much more solid look to that color. We're not getting those really ugly artifacts or anything like that. So that looks really good. So again, up for more saturation, and then down to decrease saturation. So this one's really good, especially you have a color that's in your image that is breaking the legal limits. 
of that color or legal broadcast limit sorry you can simply make that selection bring it down a little bit and everything will be nice and safe and legal so again all you got to do make your point let's say the orange bring it down desaturation bring it up add saturation very simple so let's move on to the next one U versus luminance color versus light so again same principle all you got to do is make a selection now this one adds light into that color let's do something that's really obvious and really easy to tell so let's say his shirt so just pick that again U versus luminance you're adding in light to that color or you're taking that light away from that color so the more light you add in obviously the brighter that color will become and again just make it a little bit bigger so as you can see if we push more light into that red we are getting a far lighter looking red and if we bring that down a lot we're getting a much more darker red and again this is something i actually use all the time it's very handy really want those dark tones we bring that yellow one down even because you can choose more than one point you can choose as many points as you want doesn't really matter so bring those colors down and then we turn that note off this is beforehand and then this is after now we have really deep yellow and really deep red alrighty so that one's really good the old hue versus luminance so again color versus light so you just make your selection bring down or bring up the light in that color so obviously brighter you'd go up and darker you would go down alrighty so that's a good one let's move on luminance versus saturation so this one doesn't use color at all we're just using light and shadow or white and black sorry white and black because black's here white is over here so this is our dark areas and then this is our bright area so our highlights are here and our shadows are here let's say you have a blue color cast in your shadows the footage you got you can't get rid of it all you could do is desaturate those shadows to neutralize that color so you'd make a point so let's say about here is kind of the shadow area and then you bring that down and as you can see we are desaturating the blacks in that image so let's go full screen so control f now let's take that note off control d so this is our look beforehand and again this is our look afterwards so press control d again as you can see we've really desaturated the shadow areas actually looks quite cool i actually really like this technique and I do use it a lot it really does help to make these other colors pop out and really helps to really pop this guy out of your image and you can do the other way around you can even bring those brighter areas down now we have this like funky looking area yeah the thing about this one is I never really use it for the white I would only really use it for the shadows or the darker areas but it does give you a nice looking look a nice looking feel to the image something like that looks really good now his skin tones are really popping out and really got this nice separation from him and the background it almost looks like he's on a green screen to be honest so we're probably going a bit too far but that's okay you can always bring it back up easy peasy but anyway that's a really good one for fixing color cast and if you want to make your character really pop out in the scene highly recommend learning how to use that one it's something that will be really handy further on in your color grading career Alrighty, so let's move to the next one that versus saturation all right so this one is a little bit different we're not doing shadows and brightness we're actually doing saturation versus saturation so you actually read this in a kind of a weird way so this is the desaturated part of your image and this is the saturated part of your image and that was really hard to say <laughs> that was like my fourth take in saying that anyway so this is the less saturated parts that's the way i should have said it anyway who cares Alrighty. so let's find a part that's really saturated so again let's use this orange and then let's make a point so we're not hitting the other parts of the image and so you're adding more saturation in to the areas that are the most saturated i know that sounds a bit strange but as you can see we're not hitting these other colors that have less saturation than this orange so if we do the opposite of that find an area that's not saturated so we'll make a point here and we bring that down as you can see we're desaturating these bricks meaning that these bricks 
at a lot less saturation than this orange. And again, it's a very strange thing and it sounds weird, but whatever part of the image has less saturation falls into this area. Whatever part of the image has more saturation falls into this area here. So we can make a point, let's say about here, if we desaturate all that, we are desaturating the bricks, some of his skin tone, skin tone down here, and this bed frame. And basically everything but the most saturated part of the image, which is this orange, this t-shirt, and this beanie here, which I purposely wore because it's a really hot day today, actually. <laughs> so it was pretty hot wearing this beanie. And that orange is like two weeks old. I'm not going to eat that orange. I don't know why I haven't chucked it out yet. It's just hanging around my kitchen. But I guess it's hanging around to make this video. So again, just going back on that, less saturation, this part of the image, more saturation, this part of the image. Now let's go to sat versus lum or saturation versus luminance. So this is the same principle as before. Less saturation, more saturation. And this one works basically the same, but instead of adding saturation, you're actually adding in light. So again, if you push it up, you're adding light into those colors and you're bringing it down, you're taking light out of those colors. So if we were to make a point here and bring that down, as you can see, we're taking away those less saturated areas, which again, are the bricks, some of his skin tone, this area here, generally everything but his t-shirt, beanie and orange, and some of the skin tone. Make another point here, bring it down even further. We have this really, really horrible look, but this is just to demonstrate what parts we're not hitting. So again, maybe we don't want that beanie to be such a dark yellow. We just make a point and we bring it up Make another point actually, we'll bring it around here and bring it up. Now, as you can see, we go full screen, control F. So this is beforehand and then this is afterwards. We've really added a lot of brightness to that beanie or to that yellow. We've also added it to this t-shirt and orange. So again, if you didn't want to hit those areas, all you got to do is use the power window, put it over the top of this guy's head. Now, if we go on and off, so this is off and then this is on, we are actually hitting a part of your skin tone. So you'd want to go back and finesse that selection, but that's okay. We're not worried about that today. So go back to our saturation versus luminance. And again, make another point, let's say about here. And again, as before, bringing it down, you're taking light out. You're making those less saturated areas darker, bringing it up, you're adding light in to those less saturated areas. So that's quite an interesting one. That's a really fun one to play around with. You know, some really funky looks with it. Hard to make it look natural. So I'd say, especially with this one, less is more. Don't go too crazy because push it just a little bit and it already looks like it's not really a part of anything. I mean, that orange <laughs> is like about to explode. It looks like the volcano is going to pop out the other end. So just recapping, less saturation, more saturation. When you're bringing it up, you're adding light into that saturated point, bringing it down. You're taking light away from that saturated point, which of course makes it darker, up makes it brighter. And that's about it. So we'll just quickly go back on hue versus hue, color versus color. A good way to change the color in your image. You versus saturation, you pick a point and you're taking that color away from that point you just selected. So hue versus luminance, let's make a point. And again, you're just adding light into that selected color. So again, up is adding light, down is taking away light, brighter yellow, darker yellow. Luminance versus saturation, <laughs> which we forgot to take off. You are taking saturation away from the shadows or you're adding saturation into the brighter areas of your image. The dark areas, the bright areas. If you want to desaturate the blacks, you would desaturate from this point here. Adding saturation to the whites, you would go more here and this is more your mid area.
saturation versus saturation. This one is a little bit counterintuitive, but less saturation, more saturation. Again, making a point, bringing that up. You're adding saturation into the more saturated part of the image and you're not affecting, let's say, the wall, which has less saturation than this orange. Saturation versus luminance, the exact same principle, except we're talking about light. We're not talking about saturation, bringing it up. You're adding light into the more saturated areas, bringing it down, taking light out of those saturated areas. And again, the exact same principle for less saturated areas, so we'll make a point here. You're adding light into those less saturated areas, or you're taking light away from those less saturated areas, giving it a darker look if you go down and a brighter look if you go up. That's how you use the other curves that you may not use in DaVinci Resolve. These are really, really handy, and I would recommend learning each one. You don't have to be prolific in them. You don't have to use them every time you use a grade, but they are really handy secondary curve, and I use them all the time, and they're really good just for like pinpointing a couple little things in your grade, pushing something up, taking something down to really help fill that grade together and really give it a nice look to it at the end of the day. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this curve tutorial. I've enjoyed making it. If you have any questions about grading or anything else, please leave a comment below. I'm more than happy to answer them. I hope you're having a great day and or night or whenever you're watching this. Maybe it's mid-afternoon. I don't know. Anyway, I've been Drew from Gringo Productions. Have a great day and or night and I'll see you later.